What is up, Buckeye Nation? What's going on? I am Shane Larson, also known as the Boise Buckeye. I want to give a massive shout-out to all of you, as well as a shout-out to CJ Stroud, wishing him a happy belated birthday on behalf of the rest of the guys here, Corey and Johnny, with uh, the Scarlet and Great Empire, or as you guys know it, Ohio State football with Scarlet and Great. If you guys would like to wish CJ Stroud a happy birthday with us, hit that subscribe button here on the channel. Uh, that's how we're going to be wishing him a happy birthday and giving him our support. We're going to be talking about CJ Stroud today and whether or not he can get back on the Heisman horse against Michigan State. Listen, we've had a lot of conversations circulating about CJ. He had a lot of expectations coming into this season. He's played a very, very stellar year so far. 18 touchdowns, two INTs to start the season. But there's a lot of, you know, I guess murmuring, if you want to call it that, about his last performance. And there's times where it kind of gives us flashbacks to certain games last year. So today I'm going to be talking about that. We're going to be talking about the Rutgers game. We'll talk about the weather factor for CJ Stroud and that, how that impacts him, as well as a lot of the teams in the Big Ten for that matter. We'll be talking about his first road game of the season, what we expect out of that this, this next week. And then we'll be talking about you know, whether or not uh, we're too harsh on CJ, what we should expect from him. So I want you guys to engage with us, chat with us here, and let us know what you think as you go throughout this uh, this video. My name is Shane Larson, like I said, also known as the Game Time Guru or the Boise Buckeye flying solo today. Listen, let's talk about the Rutgers game, okay? Rutgers game, he finishes 13 for 22, 154 yards, two touchdowns, one INT, okay? Mumbled that pretty quickly, but I'm pretty sure all you Buckeye fans kind of know what happened. There was a lot of uh, discussion about, man, he's, he's not as accurate right now. He's overthrowing some of these guys. He's forcing passes. He's making bad decisions. Just tuck it and run, that kind of thing, right? Here's where I want to give you guys a little perspective from my side of things. Okay. I have always thought that we should give him the benefit of the doubt, considering he's having the season that he is. And the Rutgers game was kind of a weird game when it came to weather. They had mentioned multiple times in the broadcast how windy it was down in Ohio Stadium. What I think we we as Buckeye Nation have to understand is how that impacts a quarterback. He had a struggling week. And he didn't look very Heisman-esque, if you will, this week. But did he have to? I don't know. Because you had Mayan Williams performing in the game of his life. He was he had a, a record-tying game. And then you had a, a little bit of a weather factor to, to play into it. One thing I've noticed about CJ, which I'm pretty sure NFL scouts are going to look at this, is when it comes to bad weather, he typically struggles. Right When you went to the Michigan game, we had snow flurries. But I expect that out of any quarterback. You're not going to be able to have the best game when there's uh, wind, rain, or snow. And everyone's going to say, Shane, that's just called football. Right, Bad weather is part of football. Yes, it is. And that's why you have the importance of the running game. And that's why we got smacked by Michigan last year because we didn't have that running game, nor did we have the defensive front that could match their physicality. The thing is, Big 10 football teams are built a little bit differently. That's why the SEC has a little bit of a speed factor to them, right? And, and they don't have to worry about the weather because they can just play fast all the time. Big 10 teams have to be a little bit of both. You have to be fast, but you got to be physical because come November, at the end of October and November, you're playing in cold weather games and it can impact you differently. So I give him a little bit of the benefit of the doubt. I believe that Rutgers game, yeah, he might have not been playing his most efficient game. And sometimes that's the competition. I think that's a mindset type of deal. but. Mayan was having the game of his life. You know what I mean? Uh, he was doing his thing. And and I think that CJ was, one, he, he struggled a little bit. But two, the weather has a factor and the running game three was was kind of playing in, into consideration there, right? So I, I don't think it's terrible. I think as soon as he has an off game, everyone jumps on this like train of like, man, he's doing terrible. Guys, Wisconsin, Toledo, Arkansas State. I mean, for crying out loud, he had 14 touchdowns, one INT in three games. That's wild. Like, I think th that is that is wild, right? So where you're looking at his his uh, Rutgers game in regards to, like, two touchdowns, one INT, he was only average. He, he was a 59% completion percentage. Guys, he's got 18 touchdowns, two interceptions in the first five games of the season. <laughs> he's doing just fine. He'll be just fine. The Rutgers game was one of those games. I, I feel like CJ will come back. Stronger now. Here's the other the other concept of this. It is the first road game of the season for the Buckeyes. I have never actually seen. I was talking to Corey and Johnny about this. I personally don't remember a season when my team, whether it be Ohio State or Boise State, because I'm a Boise State alum, started with five home games 
And I could be, maybe it's just because I didn't recognize it or realize it, but that was a lot. Like, I mean, we're talking five games to start the season at home. Five. So I want to see what they do on the road. What kind of, and I actually think he's going to play better. You don't have the pressure of the crowd. You have to focus a little bit more when you go on the road because you're in an un unfamiliar environment. You're not near your friends. I actually think that's where CJ shines is on the road. So this is why I think he's going to have a Heisman, you know, birthday bounce back, if you will, this week is because he's going to be on the road. And guess what? The weather, as long as it holds up, looks like it's going to be in the 50s. Pretty mild weather. I think it should be decent weather in East Lansing. Hopefully it sticks to that because I think this is where you're going to see CJ really, really shine. I would expect another three touchdown, zero INT performance or four touchdown, one INT performance max. I would hope to see that he doesn't throw any picks, but I think he has a three or four touchdown performance this week and it's a well-balanced attack. Once again, I mean, I, I honestly, I think he's just fine. I often think that we're too harsh on CJ Stroud, right? Because last year, and I now it's quoted for saying this, you can ask Johnny and Corey last year after the Oregon game. And then, you know, he struggled a little bit later. He had an injury, whether people want to believe that or not, he did have an injury. And, and I actually didn't think he played terrible for having been his, his uh, first home game start or whatever against, uh, against Oregon. He made some bad decisions, obviously, but he didn't play terrible. And I kept thinking, I'm like, dude, I'm looking at the way he throws the ball. I'm looking at the way he, he, he holds himself together, the way he's confident in his own abilities. CJ has this leadership factor to him. And it might, might not even be the way he talks to people or, or whatever. It's the way that he just holds himself up. Right. I think we're too harsh on CJ Stroud. I want to know what you guys think. Do we think, do you think we're too harsh on him? Dude just turned 21 this week. And I try to think of myself as a 21-year-old and what kind of pressures I might have had on my my life, right? <laughs> when I was 21, which hindsight, I had like zero pressure in life. Let's look at CJ Stroud for 19, 20 years old. Last year he was 20. He's playing for arguably one of the best teams. Well, not arguably one of the best teams, but arguably the best team in college football. Powerhouse program like Ohio State. All eyes are on him. They've got fan a fan base that's across the entire globe, right? And at 21 years old, he's got a lot of pressure on his shoulders to be able to perform at a high level. A lot of money flows into that program. A lot of money is on the line here. His career is on the line, right? He's he's hopefully going to make it to the next level and, and compete there. And so he has that pressure. There's a lot of pressure on CJ Stroud. And I feel as if minus maybe three or four games, he's played pretty well. He's played pretty dang well. And this year is the same thing. 18 touchdowns, two INTs. It's pretty freaking good. Rutgers game. Can't have a great game every game. The best Heisman Trophy winners that, that have come through in the past, they didn't have a great game every game. That's I want you guys to remember that. Can't have a great game every game. And he didn't need to because they still smacked him. So I have a feeling, here's my biggest takeaway of this week. I think CJ does get back on the Heisman horse. First away game of the season, he gets focused, he gets ready, and I think he air raids it through and lights up the Spartans in East Lansing. Let us know. Leave us a message or leave, leave us a comment. Let us know if you think that uh, CJ gets back on the Heisman horse this week and uh, what you expect to see from him. Because I actually am a huge fan of CJ Stroud, and I think he's absolutely performing at a high level this year and is going to continue to do so. Let us know in the comments what you think. This is Shane Larson, the Boise Buckeye. Ohio State football was scarlet and great. We'll be coming to you next time with another one. Go Bucks.